Fighting fires is a dangerous profession 12 months of the year. But in the summertime, when temperatures start to climb, that danger increases. Crews are not out of the woods when they're out of the building. July has been busy for local firefighters. There have been seven fires this month and fighting them in the heat can be dangerous. Certainly when we have stretches of weather like this where the temperature is above uh, 20 or 21 degrees uh, uh, Celsius, it, uh, those are the, uh, are the times when, uh, when heat stress can really become an issue. Fire Chief John Lane took part in a study of the effects of heat while firefighting. He says it comes down to three crucial areas, blood pressure, heart rate and core temperature. The, the heart rate is, is typically what makes you feel uh, tired and their heart rate will come down very, very quickly, yet their core temperature could actually still be increasing. Firefighters are advised to take a 20 minute break in between two work cycles or two bottles of compressed air. But Melanie Perrin at the regional district says that's just a guideline. But it can be even less than one bottle. We will go down to one bottle if it's really strenuous work and it's uh, really high temperatures. And, and we don't want to see any of our people injured as a result of responding to an incident. If the core temperature doesn't come down, firefighters can suffer heat stress and even lose consciousness. So the big danger is without really enforcing those work cycles, uh, a firefighter could come out, rest for 10 minutes, heart rate comes down, they feel fine and are ready to go back in but their core temperature is still elevated. The dozens of pounds of gear and insulating uniforms don't help the heat. Well, the big problem for firefighters is that bunker suit that we have to wear. And uh, that's great protection from the fire and steam, uh, but it really uh, encapsulates uh, the, uh, the firefighter's body. Lane says active cooling, like sitting in front of a fan or dipping forearms in cold water can help, Paramedics also respond to every fire to make sure everyone is healthy. There is a WCB requirement that we roll over our staff and have them check in with what's called a rehabilitation sector. Um, and that's just to make sure that it's their own physical well-being, that they are not overstraining themselves and putting themselves at risk of, of, of going down from heat exhaustion. Watching vital signs as well as hydrating and active cooling are all ways to survive a fire even after it's out. Kelly Linehan, CKPG News.